Thank mm-hmm. you.
Amen, church. Good morning. Amen, church. Give yourself a clap for being in worship this morning. The earth is filled with its glory. Blessed be the Lord, God Almighty. Welcome to our worship service this morning. Um, as we celebrate Pastor Appreciation, we want to give thanks to God for all the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. If you are in the sanctuary this morning and you're worshiping with us for the first time, I would ask you kindly to stand or just wave your hand so we can give you that noil and welcome. And good morning. Let me see you. Good morning. We have visit. Come on, Norlin. We have some visitors that we need to acknowledge. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to say you to tell us who you are and who brought you to this beautiful sanctuary this morning. Pardon? What's your name and who? Brown. Miss. Mrs. Melina Brown's grand, grand, uh, granddaughter. Oh. And it's not my first time here. Well, welcome. Yeah. Well, my name is Bernard Brown. I'm one of the. I'm one. I'm one of the sons, and of course, I've been here a few times. Good morning. My name is Janet Allen, and I'm related to cousin Merle. Um, and this is my first time. Welcome. Good morning, my birthday centurion. And this is our day. Merlina Brown. And you're celebrating what? 100 yesterday. Church, come on. Come on. I'm, today I'm one day older. <laughs> Amen. Oliver Fleegrin, and uh, I'm her, her grandson. Welcome. Good morning, uh, church family. I'm here again to say um, we're here to celebrate Mom's 100th birthday. Nice to see you all again. Good morning. I'm Miss Brown's youngest daughter. Well, welcome, family. Are there any other visitors in the house? Are those any visitors in a long time? Um, Norlan, welcome yourself into God's house this morning. Come on, Norlan. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice with all our hearts as we've never rejoiced before. Amen? Day for today is actually Miss Kelly's birthday. So let's all wish her a happy birthday. Now you see happy how many birthday. birthdays we have today. Sister Kelly, we celebrated with Sister Kelly last week. So we are so rich and blessed. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for, find, um, for coming and celebrating and sharing in our worship this morning. We pray that the service will be a blessing to you. And so now let us go to uh, those online. If you are visiting with us for the first time, please indicate in the chat so we may reach out to you also. Now you know every Sunday morning at 9.45, we have Bible study in the library. So if you would like to join the Bible study group on a Sunday morning, come on in. Come on in and pray and study together. And on Wednesday, we have Zoom at 12, and we're having a fantastic time. Take time out of your lunch if you are lunched at 12. I know you might not be able to stay for the entire session, but join us on Zoom at 12 on Wednesday. And on Monday evening, we have prayer, and that is at 8 p.m., and that is a call-in number. If you're not familiar with that, please call the church office or ask any one of the ushers to instruct you as to how you should go about that. Now, we don't have any pastors in Barnes Hall today, but I think there's a few outside in the breezeway. And if you don't need the pastries, and you know of someone else, please share the joy and the wealth that we have here at Norland. Of course, we have an ecumenical Bible study group on Zoom, and we are doing our first prayer brunch. You know, we have anniversaries too, so if you have not received your tickets, please see any one of these ladies on the platform, that's Sister Cassandra, Sister, <laughs> Sister Saunders, 
Reverend Pastor Margaret and myself. And we have tickets, and that's the November the 11th at 11 a.m. And it's going to be a very, very exciting brunch. And we have a guest speaker, which is um, Commissioner Ig Igadora, a councilwoman. She will be our guest speaker. So please see any of us and get your tickets soon. Thank you. Birthday is the last Sunday in the month, so all October people need to stand and dance. Let's celebrate. Celebrate with all the October people. Happy, happy birthday to all the October members and friends. May God continue to bless you. On behalf of the pastor and the Norland family, we pray that God will bless you and as you grow from strength to strength. Happy, happy, happy birthday and happy anniversary. Let us all stand for our call to worship. Let us stand. Our hearts are filled up towards God, are lifted up towards God. God created all that is. We celebrate that great love of God. God gifted us with God's only Son, Jesus Christ. Rejoice and be glad today. Our hearts and spirits praise God for all God's blessings. Amen. Let us continue as we sing our opening hymn. Immortal, invisible, God only wise.
church. Let us pass the peace. The peace of God be with you all. And also with you. Jesus in me, love the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me, love the Jesus in you. So we say, so we say, so we say. church the jesus in me loves the jesus in you the jesus in me love the jesus in you so easy it's so Come and give it to you over here. <laughs> Father, the Jesus in us loves the Jesus in you. Blessed. We have a visitor in the house. I told you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Amen. And it's so easy to love. Amen. Amen. Master, the tempest is raging, the billows are tossing high, the sky is all shadowed with blackness, no shelter or help is nigh. 
down, not that we perish. How can the lie asleep when each moment so madly is threatening a grave in the angry G? or demons or men or whatever it be no water can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and earth and sky they all shall be I will peace be still Amen, church? Come on, man. A young man just told you about Jesus, and you're sitting so warm. These are tomorrow's future. So let's hear it for Brother Philip again. Well, it's now time for joys and concern, and Sister Cassandra has the mic. Are there any joys this morning? Oh, I see Miss Kelly has a joy. Everybody clap, Miss Kelly has a joy. <laughs> Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, I, was, I want to say something. I um I wish I want to thank everyone who came to my service last week, my birthday service. It's not really my birthday. It's um Tuesday coming is my birthday. Okay. <laughs> but the minister said I should have it the twenty second. So that was it. So I am saying thanks to Pastor Margaret and all that are up on the platform with all the church members and all the visitors and all who, came, all who I invited came. So it's just my joy this morning to say thanks to everyone who came. Amen. Any other joy Any this other? morning? Listen, we have a congregation where we have members, as we said, this week alone, we have celebrated the birthday of three of our members, Mrs. Kelly, and we have celebrated with Miss Merlina Brown. And even though we didn't have a big party, it, Mrs. Saunders' birthday was this week yes. as well. So members that have been with us forever and have set the foundation on which we currently stand, so for that, and there are so many more whose birthdays are coming that have been such a stalwart here at Norland. And for that, if nothing else, we are all grateful. Amen. Okay. Any other? This morning, again, it's pastor's appreciation. So I also want to say that Pastor Margaret, my joy this morning is to have you here with us. Amen. You, you know, we word. go back and forth. She knows. Her and I go back and forth. But I always know that you do that with the best intentions. Amen. And so for that, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for shepherding this church. And thank you for tough love when Amen. necessary. Well, Cassandra, you Any did what I was going to do. So, <laughs> Pastor, we are so thankful. 
because I am joyful that we, were, we are able to celebrate with our pastor. And I want to also say welcome to Holy Family and Father. And Father Ward. It wasn't you, Father Ward. I said Holy Family. I didn't say Father Ward. Holy Family. Amen. So welcome again, Holy Family, for joining us. Norland, give them a warm welcome. Are there any other joys? Okay. We're oh, going go to go to... Hold on. Hold on, Claudette. Okay. Friends and family, everybody together, am I blessed? Am I blessed? I spell my blessed. B L E S S S. He is blessed. Thank God. Today I'm one hundred and one day. Oh. I'm blessed having my children, my family good friends, and um, all this congregation saying, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you all for who came yesterday and who didn't come yesterday. I still give thanks. Amen. Are there any concerns this morning before we do our prayer song? I want you to also, just to remind you that this week we did send home Sister Tucker. Sister Tucker, please keep the family in your prayers. It was a beautiful, beautiful celebration of life for Sister Tucker also like to ask for prayers for those around us. There's wars all over. And if you haven't already heard, Acapulco got hit with a Category 5 hurricane that caused major disaster there. So even though we may be well, we keep those in our community, our larger community, in our prayers as well. As always, the altar is open. So if you would like to bring your concerns to the altar, the altar is always open, so you can join us there. Are there any other concerns? We're going to sing the first verse of Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, then we'll pray, then we'll sing the second verse. Gently, Jesus is calling 
He's calling you. He's calling me. Calling. Calling for you who are sick in your body. Arthritis, high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes. Come. Come unto me, he said. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Bless our church. Bless our pastor. Bless our guest minister. Come and have us to unify in this church, to love each other, forgive each other. Thank you for those who had their birthdays, our beautiful ladies of the church that shows us the way to be loving and kind. Heavenly Father, let your hands perform miracle in our bodies, in our home. Bring our children home. Bring our spouses home. Bring our family together, Lord. This is the day you have made. Whatever it is you need, ask God. He will grant it to you. As he had granted me favor a few years ago, I was on my deathbed. Jesus brought me back. Amen. I was in a tunnel where there were two men, one on the right, one on the left. One said, come, come to me to the light. Yes. But the other one said, my child, Come to me through the darkness. Trust me. And I was going back and forth. And the one who has the darkness, I trust what he say. Trust me. When I walked through that dark tunnel, there was beautiful light. I woke up in the hospital bed. My funeral was supposed to be like Monday, like the day Sunday. Monday. We're getting ready to officially announce me dead. Hmm. When I came through, I came through with a gift of healing, but it doesn't always come upon me. And this is why I say, softly and gently, Jesus is calling. Give your life to him. There's so many things happening around the world. Earthquake, famine, wars, rumors of wars. Government not coming together. People not coming together. On your job, in your home. Please, find your way to Jesus Christ. Bless our pastor today. Today is her appreciation day. We also bless her to, and us to come together as one. Softly and gently, Jesus is calling. Yes. Calling for you and for me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 church, oh for grace to trust him more.
It's that time when we get to praise, when we get to stand or sit and clap our hands and rejoice. So stand with us as we sing, you deserve the glory. He deserves the glory. Come on, let's sing together. church there is no one else but Jesus because he's great let's be grateful grateful that we're alive and well this morning so be thankful
victories we won I could go on and on and on about your words because I'm grateful grateful so grateful just to praise you Good morning, church family. Good morning. This poem is called A Blessing. Pastor, we just want to say your faith is an inspiration to us all. Your kindness and thoughtfulness help us not to fall. Your caring heart and gentle ways are a gift from God above. And we are grateful to have you as our shepherd with your love. We thank you for your tireless work, for preaching the word of God above, and for being a shining example of devotion and of love. 
You are a blessing to us all, and we are grateful for your faith. Your leadership and guidance, may God, may God bless you and keep you safe. Amen. Come on, church. Come on. Encouragement. Amen. Young people. They could have said, no, I ain't going to do it. They did it all by themselves. I've never heard what they were going to do. They just told me they wanted to do something. And I'm so blessed. Give them another one. Amen. Thank you, Aiden. Thank you, guys. Blessings. This morning, our scripture lesson is taken from Psalm 137, 1 through 4. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. For there those who carried us away captive asked of us a song. And the, those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Amen. How shall we sing Lord's prayer song in a forbidden land? Ooh. Let me repeat that. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Ushers, will you please prepare yourselves for offering at this time? And please, congregation, please follow the instructions of the ushers. It's offering. Ushers, bring the full tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And thus put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing blessing. I will rebuke the locusts for you so that it will not destroy the produce of your soil and your vine in the field shall not be barren, says the Lord of hosts. Then all nations will count you happy for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. Let us sing, give them all to Jesus as we bring our offering to the Lord. Are you tired of chasing pretty rainbows? Please follow the, please follow the usher's instructions. Please follow Are the usher's Are you tired of spinning round and round? Wrap up all the shadow dreams of your life And at the feet of Jesus lay them down Give them all, give them all, give them all We give them all, give them all to Jesus Shattered dreams, wounded hearts and broken toys. Give them all. We give them all. Give them all. We give them all. We give them all to Jesus. And He will turn your sorrows into joy. He never said you don't. About the very thing that once brought me. Give them all. We give them all. Give them all. We give them all. We give them all to Jesus. Shattered dreams, wounded hearts, and broken toys. 
We give them all. We give them all. We give them all. We give them all to Jesus. And he will turn your sorrows into joy. And are we yet alive? And see each other's face. All thanks and praise to Jesus given for his redeeming grace. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, please, Lord, do not pass me by. Father, the free will offering given by your people, we ask that you bless this offering, Father. Let these offerings be used, Father. To the, for the building up of your kingdom here on earth, we ask it of you in Jesus' mighty name. It's in Jesus' name, Father, that we ask the things we ask of you. And in Jesus' name and Jesus' name alone, we do believe that it will be done. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning.
to move you church then what will the goodness of God thank you so much Bryson you always warm our hearts every time amen amen, amen. amen. Bryson thank you thank you as you can see our children are not the tomorrow there are right now. So we give thanks to each and every amen, one of you amen. this morning for not only taking in God's word for yourself, but also helping to spread it back to others amen. because that's what we're called to do. So thank you. Thank each and every one of you. And ladies, I know you haven't danced yet, but thank you too because we will have a beautiful dance later on. But now I am given the task of introducing our guest speaker or our guest preacher this morning from my heart. He is no stranger to any of us. And I'm going to burst him. I'm going to bust this bubble up here. Because as a man of the cloth sitting right here, he just threatened me. <laughs> that him is Jamaican and him run things. And I'm going to only read one paragraph of what is on here. But you see, because I'm Jamaican too, I'm going to listen too hard. I'm going to read everything we're there. Because since most of us know you as Father Ward, we're going to give them a little bit of a background. <laughs> so, our very much appreciated guest preacher this morning is the Reverend Horace David. Ward. And he has been the rector of the Episcopalian Church of the Holy Family in Miami Gardens since 1995, before Simona Bond. A graduate of the United Theological College of the University of the West Indies and the Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary, he has been in for over 46 years in ministry. He has served in congregations in Jamaica, Ohio, New Jersey, South Carolina, before coming here to Miami. Prior to doing this, his leadership in Holy Family, he, sorry, prior to and during his leadership, Holy Family has been a center for sacred worship, family fellowship, and respite for the community from the storms of life. The members have prayed, worked tirelessly, and rejoiced together through triumphs and tribulations. Apart from serving his congregation, Father Ward has forged relationship with several community organizations and pardoned with, partnered with them in providing services for the residents of our community through its ministries, including the Daughters of the King Episcopalian Church Women, the Golden Circle, Holy Family continues to reach out to the community with food distribution, diaper drives, and during the pandemic, testing and vaccination, job fairs, citizens and immigration forums, healthcare, toy drive, in partnership with those community organizations. To connect with its members during the COVID-19 pandemic, transitioned its service and events to an online platform and had successfully returned to in-person worship as of May of 2022. HCF welcomes everyone seeking a church home, whether they are from the angelical worship tradition or another denomination, or with no religion affiliation at all. So Matthew 11, 28 to 29 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. So it is my pleasure this morning to introduce to you Father Ward.
sweet Jesus. The goodness of God. So, let me give you the before the sermon, then I give you the sermon, and then I give you the real sermon, and then we take a second offering. It is with God's goodness that we're here today. Let me tell him something. Can we make a joyful noise? Can we allow Psalm 150 to come alive that everything that hath breath To the reverend, soon to be doctor, Margaret Cartway. Wait, where you come from again? <laughs> from this, the great community of Northern United Methodist. On behalf of the beloved community of Holy Family. It's a joy, a joy, a joy that we dare. The Episcopal Church and the partnering of the United Methodist Church goes way back. There is more. Very quickly, some the historical connection that you may already know, but let me celebrate. When in 1786 the membership of St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church in Philadelphia included both blacks and whites. However, the white members met that year and decided that thereafter black members should sit only in the balcony. Two black Sunday worshipers, Absalom Jones and Richard Allen, whose enthusiasm for the Methodist Church had brought many blacks into the congregation, learned of the decision that only when, on the following Sunday, ushers tapped them on the shoulder during the opening prayers and demanded that they move to the balcony without waiting for the end of the prayer. They walked out, followed by other black members. Absalom Jones conferred with William White, Episcopal Bishop of Philadelphia, who agreed to accept the group as an Episcopal parish. Jones would serve as lay reader and after a period of study, would be ordained and serve as rector. Richard Allen wanted the group to remain Methodist. And in 1793, he left to form a Methodist congregation. In 1816, he left the Methodists to form a new denomination, the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Absalom Jones ordained deacon and priest in 1795, and Allen ordained deacon and elder in 1799 and 1816, were the first two black Americans to receive formal ordination in any denomination. Holy Family and Northern United have history. We have connection. We have relationship, and we share one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. We have every reason to celebrate the goodness 
all together. I'm going to ask you to really participate. I'm really going to ask you to break out. No, no, let me rephrase that. Please do not break out. I would like you to brock out. Is that all right? By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down. Would you stand, please? And there we were. Carried us away, captivity required from us a song. But how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange Hold on, pull up, hold on, pull up, hold on, pull up, hold on, pull up. Hold on, hold on, let me, let me correct something. How can we sing what? The Lord's song. No, 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 no. King Alpha. <laughs> or if you want to say Jaja song. <laughs> you see, King Alpha and Jaja is Hebrew. It goes back to the Hebrew scriptures. But it's okay if you want to sing what? The Lord. All right. Hit it from the top. And put some bass tonight. Drop some bass. Drop some bass. By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, and there we wait, till we remembered Zion. For the wicked carried us away, captivity required from us a song. But how can we sing King Alpha's song in a strange land? For the wicked carried us away, captivity required from us a song. But how can we sing King Alpha's song in a strange land? By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, and there we wait, till we remembered Zion. By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, and there we wait till we remembered Zion. For the wicked carried us away, captivity required from us a song. But how can we sing King Alpha's song in a strange land? Every good sermon has a text. And that was the text. Psalm what? Verses what? Psalm what? Verses what? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the sermon done. <laughs> but I asked you a while ago, come, let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad. I asked you to break out. No, no. I asked you to break out. Redemption song 
Emancipate yourselves. Boss tonight some more. Boss tonight one more. Amen. 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 Unlike most of Bob Marley's works, Redemption Song is strictly solo acoustic. With no evidence of the reggae historic rhythm. Instead, Redemption's song is a deeply contemplative and personal song that evoked the sound and style of another great singer, Bob Dylan. Nonetheless, nonetheless, this song is considered one of Bob Marley's seminal works Listed as number 66 among the 500 greatest songs of all time. Its words, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Echoed before by whom? By whom? By whom? Marcus Messiah God. But its message goes back to the God of all times, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the God who brought into being you and me, the God who looked down and smiled at those two Liberians. I almost said Liberians. And those two Lib Liberians made love. And boom, ba, ba, boom. Thirteen children. Was it thirteen? Huh? How many children your parents brought forth into this world? Oh, um, Pastor Margaret said five, but don't believe her. That, that's only for the start. But five gifts to the world. And we rejoice. We rejoice. And here we've come this day. For God has brought us a long way by the rivers of Babylon. God has brought God's people a long way, giving us new life, and it's called redemption. And we gather today to celebrate the goodness of God, the goodness of God. I'm going to cut right through to the point. Our gathering today is that of pastor appreciation. Why? 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 Can I have two or three of you stand and in one second tell us why pastor appreciation? Come on. Test it. Test it. Come. Come, stand. Why pastor appreciation? Hello? Hello?
good. Next person. Next person. Now, I, I, I'd like, yes. Good. Good. Next person. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. I need two more, ma I need two men. <laughs> you notice what I almost said? I need two more men. <laughs> yes, brother. Yes, my son. Is that Bryson? Is that Bryson? All right, my brother. Clap the boy. Thank you, Bryson. Cleve. Clap the two brothers. In summary, pastor appreciation. Three quick considerations. Connecting with what the four have just said. The pastor appreciation allows for the faith community to bond one with the other. A pastor appreciation strengthens relationships of community with community with community. And you see how significant it was and for which I'm grateful to Holy Family to have come along here this morning and join you. The great community, the great community, the great community of Northern United Methodist Church. To celebrate our oneness, the history that I gave you with those two brothers back in the 18th century. But these two congregations for Holy Family, for me and for Nolan, since 1996, my wife, Marcia, and our three, three, oh God, I got broken again. Marcy and I and our tree, Jing Jing Dem, arrived in December 1995 and by that Lent, when we had the joint Lenten series on a Wednesday evening, found ourselves here connecting with this community. And so pastor appreciation in, in this new era, in this post-pandemic, allows us to reconnect again the goodness of God. Pastor appreciation encourages churches to come together as a community. So yes, it's the community of churches but it's also the community within each place to celebrate the goodness of God. I said I was going to move along very fast here. I offer this third consideration of why pastor appreciation. It honors the hard work and dedication of the clergy. It honors the hard work and dedication of the clergy, of the ordained. What is it? What is it about each pastor? One person offered this description. Pastors are a valuable part of our community, working tirelessly to lead their congregations and provide spiritual guidance. Yeah. 
Thank you, Pastor Margaret, for being the spiritual guide to this community of Norland United, to being the spiritual guide to the other communities of faith in this, the great city of Miami Gardens, including Holy Family. Pastor Margaret, pastor appreciation also has some deeper considerations. But pastor appreciation says to you, Pastor Margaret, well done, thou good and faithful servant. It also says, Pastor Margaret, take good care of yourself. It also says, Pastor Margaret, in taking good care of yourself, take good care of your family. It also says, Pastor Margaret, that dream the impossible dream. See that God is above and beneath and to your right and to your left and go for it. And go for it. One of the things I know of Pastor Margaret is, is her heart. For this, the congregation here at Norland United. By the way, we do not gossip you. But what we share are the dreams and the hopes. And we do so with a heart of love. For those who have gone before, for those who are here, and for those who will come when we have turned gray, dead, stink, and gone. When we're no longer, and when those who come after, whom God would have sent, can take the baton, can lift high the cross, and keep on keeping on. Let me give you a quick reference about the clergy. And we all know it. The COVID years have not been the kindest to the clergy. When the COVID hit, just like it hit all of us, from the research, many of our clergy went into a tailspin. And I can speak for myself. And I'm just opening heart to heart here with you. I'm sure it hit Pastor Margaret hard just as well. Likewise, going into a tailspin. Many and most of us, while we, for example, had some experience with social media and with high-tech technology, truth of the matter is that we, when the shutdown came, we scrambled to find a way. When the shutdown came, That at Holy Family, I was broadcasting from home. You notice I use the word, big word, broadcast. You know what broadcast means? You get your cell phone, you prop it up on a piece of stick, and you talk into the camera. And as I remember, I don't have a clue who I was talking with or to. 
But what I did know then was with the kind support of my family, of my wife, Marcia, who is sitting here, with the kind support of our children, the Jing Jing who came back in 1995, who were now adults, and particularly our son who was then living here, I had no idea that he had such knowledge on how to put things together. And in partnership with others there at Holy Family and reaching out to others in the community, assisted in broadcasting. And together they formed the media team, the communications team that has taken that work, that ministry to the next level. You see, it came out of a heart of love. I can tell you from my own experience, and I'm sure from Pastor Margaret as well, there were many nights when I would go down on my knees and fall asleep. There were many nights when I would lie awake and I would count ko, and when I got tired of counting ko, I would count sheep. When I got tired of counting sheep, I would count goats because, yes, those are my favorites, namely curry goat. <laughs> and when I done count the goat them, I looked to the chicken because all I could think of was curry chicken. So between the cows and the sheep and the goat and the curry chicken, it's 2.30 in the morning and I was dead tired falling asleep. But therein lies the goodness of God. A God who says, I am the way, I am truth, I am life. But in which the gratitude, the gratitude, the gratitude for the community who stood then, though some lost their way. Some who have gone and are never returning. But God, go with them. And thanks be to God. It's not us and them. It's we and it's God's goodness who will guide us into a new future. Pastor appreciation is of the absolute importance because it brings us together. It binds us together. It gives us root. It gives us strength. It gives us hope. It allows for Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, and there we wept. When we remembered yesteryear before COVID, but then during the experience of COVID, when we hit a foreign land, God who is able and with the goodness of God to lead, guide, and direct. Pastor appreciation, yes, is for the clergy. But pastor appreciation is for all. Is for all. Is for all. Now, Pastor appreciation being for all. Let's move on in the now and the next. Let's move on in the now and the next. And how? And how? And how? With the goodness of God. And from Matthew chapter 22, verse 
hearing that he had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees met together. And one of their number tested him with this question. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your, your soul. This is the greatest commandment. It comes first. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Everything in the law and the prophets hangs on these two commandments. Love. In the now. To take us to the next. I just read Matthew lessons and Jesus' teaching. From this, the New English Bible, New, Tran New Testament translation that I received on June the 19th, 1977. For as written here by my then what is called warden, The one responsible for us seminarians there at the United Theological College of the West Indies. When Ken Lewis of blessed memory wrote, this New Testament was given to Horace David Ward on the occasion of his ordination to the diaconate at the Church of St. Thomas the Apostle Kingston Parish Church on the 19th June 1977 with the prayers and blessings and signed by Herbert Jamaica, the Right Reverend Bishop Herbert Edmondson, who ordained three of us deacons, Harold Daniel, Lloyd Anthony, and myself. And I was the baby of the group. And my two other friends, beloved, and colleagues are now retired. I miss still I walk. <laughs> I'm glad for walk too. And enjoy the little piece I walk. Because in the little piece I walk since 1995, I get for me Uno. And really enjoy the love, the collegiality, the partnership of being able to stand with one the other, to stand in the midst of this, the great city of Miami Gardens, to stand in our two congregations, yes, as well as other communities, to love the Lord our God with our whole selves. Now, I'm heading to the end. And I'm going broke away from the sermon that I'd like to end on the note of fierce love. I'd like to end on the note where you take this love fiercely. Now, at Holy Family, some of them tell me send me chat too much. <laughs> and it's true. Fierce has to do with 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Faith, hope, and love. Hear the boldness.
can you go into the world boldly, fiercely, and love the Lord your God? Can you go into the world and love your neighbor? Can you go into the world nonstop and love God? See, I want to end on those questions. I don't want to give you the picnic bar. <laughs> and by the way, here's my wife Marcia here. Uh, if you get tired of your little girl, just bring her over. Marcia will be only too happy for us to. <laughs> just bring her. Marcia and I are glad for Tifa. Marcia works with volunteers with Guardian at Lighten. So she has the skill set of how to make sure your little one stays with us <laughs> permanently. And you can come at Christmas every five years. <laughs> now you may say, Father Ward, what kind of foo foo sermon that? <laughs> and you might say, you know, stick to the point. But folks, look at how God's goodness intervened and, yes, demonstrated the love of God. Demonstrated the fierce love that you have to create, that God is gifting you, that you already have alive in your life, and that you go from this place celebrating. The goodness of God and the right, honorable, soon doctor to be, Margaret Cartway from a foreign land. <laughs> well, hear what? The sermon done. In God's goodness, in God's name, with God's love, a fierce love of God. Amen. It's the goodness of God's love. Thank you, Father Ward. Amen. Truth is I'm tired, options are few, I'm trying to pray, but where are you, I'm all churched out, hurt and abused, I can't pray for what's left. Truth is, I'm weak. No.
strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if I try, but still my soul refuses to don't have much to bring my heart's torn to pieces it's my offering Thank you so much. Just before we do our video presentation, Father Ward, I need you. Well, could you come forward, Father? I've known Father Ward from the first day he came to Mammy Gardens. I sang for him on that day when they welcomed you into Holy Family. And from that day, you've been so gracious. Father Ward, this is just a token of our appreciation. We just want to say thank you for your inspiring message, not just to New Orleans, but to the world, because you know we are live on YouTube. Yes, yes boss. <laughs> you broke out too much. I'm sorry for you. But Father, don't stop doing what you're doing. God loves you, and so do we.
Somebody walk on can give this to Marcia and some tell them for telling them. Oh, my Miss Shanley, thank you so much for giving this to Father's wife. And we lost it. <laughs> thank you, Father. You can see. give Father one another. Thank you. And now we're going to have a, a special video presentation. And after that, I think the United Methodist men will do a presentation and those other people. Let's do a video presentation to Pastor Margaret Cartway, our illustrious pastor. Hit it. Your 
Reverend Pastor Margaret Cartway is not just a pastor. She is the first elder to bless Norland United Methodist Church. If you do not know what an elder is, she's an ordained person who serves a local church or churches who has been ordained to a ministry of word, sacrament, and order, filling and preaching the pastoral office ordained by the bishop, Pastor Margaret Cartway. That's just a snippet of the things that you have done over the years. Since Our middle name is what, Father? Oh, okay. <laughs> Pastor, I think the men, United men, United Methodist men would like to do something special today for you. Good afternoon, church family, visitors. We welcome you today, and on behalf of the men of Norland, I'd like to personally give you these bouquet of roses. And a small token of our appreciation, and on a personal level, what you do to help my son becoming a father for the first time, giving him the encouragement for me to step back and let him do his thing. And Miss Brown, he's one year and one day <laughs> behind you, my granddaughter. So thank you very much for what you do to us. Church, it's your turn. We have this beautiful box, which I'm going to take down. Some of you have gotten envelopes, special envelopes for pastor appreciation. It's your time to bless pastor. Come with your envelopes if you have them, or if you don't, whatever you have, please place it right here for the pastor. Come on, church.
yes, says yes to your will. Come on, Cassie, let's sing it. My soul, come on, come on, guys. Says yes, says yes. yes. My soul says yes, says yes to your will. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes. Says yes. I want to thank those who came in after. I said, welcome our visitors and friends. Thank you for coming to celebrate this momentous occasion. We don't get to say thank you to our clergy as often. We don't love them the way we should, but we want them to know that we appreciate them. After the service, there is a uh, celebration continue in Barnes Hall. Thanks again. We're going to close out with a video. So relax. Um, Father Ward, can you do the blessing before we do the video or you want to do the blessing af after the video? After the video, Father Ward will bless us. Pastor, do you want to say anything before? Yes, I do. I forgot the lady of the hour. What, all that well, video. I want to say thanks so much to Holy Family for bringing my friend to be here today. He is my friend. He's my buddy. I don't have to pretend with him because he doesn't pretend with me either. When I finally found out that he was coming, I told Claudia, really? You're going to do this to me? But he did pretty good today. He didn't go, he didn't throw me overboard. <laughs> I appreciate you for always being there for me. Thank you. Holy Family, thank you. Nolan, thank you so much for this. Thank you. You, you got my heart. Just... My soul says yes. Come on, church, let's stand. The video says is not working, yes. so we're going to close out with my soul. Says yes. yes. My soul says yes. Says yes to your will. My soul says yes. Says yes. for allowing me, Nolan, to be me. This cruel woman, this gravel woman from Liberia, West Africa, to just be me. Thank you for opening up doors for me to be in missions. And you know what? As you reach out and you continue to do what God wants you to do, Nolan, you will see what the good Lord will do. And then you too will say, come and see. Come and see, oh, come, come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done.
once you become free, you become yourself because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Thank you for today. Thank you for making me to realize that God has work for me to do. <laughs> Along with you guys, because you're not going to just throw me down there and leave me hanging. So, Nolan, thank you for another year. Can you believe it? Another year? I am grateful. I appreciate you. Thank you. Father. Father, close us out. <laughs> the Reverend soon to be Dr. <laughs> Margaret Maud. I just baptized her that middle name, Maud Cartway, okay? <laughs> God's love, God's love, God's love. Amen. Amen. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. I Remember to join us in Barnes Law.